in the past few years, we've seen a remarkable shift, actually, in Americans' engagement with this issue. So uh, as of December of 2018, we find that Americans at an all-time record high in accepting that climate change is actually happening at about 73%. Uh, an all-time high in their understanding that it's mostly human caused at 68% of Americans. And then perhaps most importantly, we see an all-time record high of uh, worry about climate change. 29% um, of Americans now are very worried about, ish about climate change, and I believe it's about 64% overall say that they're at least somewhat worried. Um, that really kind of tracks with what we've been seeing in the past few years is a real uptick uh, in overall public uh, concern about climate change. And that really f falls out into two main interesting groups. One among Democrats. Democrats actually had already believed that climate change was happening and human caused and, and worried about it. But for them, they've also really increased their sense that this is a high national priority for the president and for Congress. Um, but back on those core beliefs of that it's happening in human cause, the real change there has not been among Democrats and it hasn't been among independents. It's been among Republicans, and in particular, among conservative Republicans. So just in the past couple of years, we've seen about a 19 percentage point increase among conservative Republicans in accepting that climate change is real. So I think part of it is that the larger society is increasingly engaged with this issue. So there's these social effects of being part of families and communities where your people are increasingly engaging the issue. It's certainly more uh, evident in the media. And we've also seen increasing, unfortunately, uh, real tragedies affecting communities all across this country and showing up on our television screens, of course, and you, it's, it, you cannot but help but feel for the people whose lives have been ripped apart by the fires, the record-setting fires that occurred in California last year, or the devastation that happened to Florida because of Hurricane Michael, or what's going on right now in the Midwest with massive flooding. Um, these are record-setting event after record-setting event after record-setting event. And what we're seeing is that Americans are starting to, increasingly, starting to connect the dots and at least ask the question, what's going on with all this extreme weather? Could this have something to do with climate change? So we do a national radio program called Yale Climate Connections that plays on about 470 stations across the country every day with a minute and a half story. These are very short, brand new one, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And what we do is we feature the voices of everyday Americans from every part of the country, from every walk of life, talking about how climate change is already affecting their lives right here, right now. What are they doing to actually address this issue? And it turns out they're doing amazing things all over America. It's about our faith in morality, okay? We're seeing religious voices. Every single major religious organization in the world now has come to the fore and said, climate change is not just a scientific issue. It's an issue of faith and morality. It calls the deepest questions about who we are as human beings, how we treat one another, and how we treat this planet that we live on. And for those who believe, what is the proper relation between us and the divine? However, that's defined by different religions. It's not just the pocketbook issues that people are talking about at the kitchen table. Think about the fact what our grandparents did. Our grandparents uh, and their parents were in a generation that took the entire world's city and building stock and installed plumbing and electricity. So that's a profound accomplishment. I think that's the kind of thing that we've done in the past, fought and won World War II, or put a man on the moon, have solved some of the world's worst diseases. Of course we can do this. Of course we can do this. But it's up to us to decide that we're going to do it. The business community itself is another one of those voices that is louder than ever before. Many of these businesses understand that their business model is at risk because of these, these events. But the other side of it is that this is an enormous, absolutely gargantuan economic opportunity. So 
unfortunately, the United States, like so many other things, like we did with televisions and VCRs, we invented the technology, but other countries got to get all the jobs and all the economic benefit because they figured out how to do them at mass scale and sell them back to us. China is looking at this enormous economic opportunity and saying, we want to own as much of that market as possible. So I think we're actually, whether we know it or not, we are in a one of the biggest economic races in human history and other countries know exactly where they are in that race. We don't, many of us don't even know that we're in it. If you could ask an expert on climate change one question, what would you ask? What we find is that the doubtful and dismissive, their fundamental question is, how do you know that global warming is real? How do you know that it's happening? And on a deeper level, why should I trust you? But the middle groups, the cautious and the disengaged, their primary question isn't that. Their primary question is like, okay, it's happening, maybe it's human cause, but so what? Why should I care? The alarmed and concerned, however, are like, okay, I got it, it's happening, it's human cause, it's serious, but what do we do? What can I do as an individual? What can we do collectively as neighborhoods, as communities, as cities, as states, as the country, or the world? What can we do?